6 a.m. and we are tired. <laughs> haven't slept That's at okay. all. <laughs> actually marching for a lot of reasons. Um, the first being is that science has always been political. I mean, if we're looking from the beginning um, of when science first really started emerging, uh, Copernicus, who found heliocentricity, like he uh, did it for the church, the Roman Catholic Church, which was the biggest political power at the time. Um, and if you look throughout history, the nuclear arms race, the space race, all of those were fueled by uh, politics. I didn't think I'd ever have to do this. I never really saw myself coming to a protest. Um, but, you know, I'm starting to get fed up with sort of just neglect of the sciences. You know, science is what I do with a, uh, my life and a lot of my time, and it's, it's incredibly frustrating to see people not taking it seriously, not understanding kind of the importance of science to society and what it's given us, and so that's, that's why I'm here. As a graduate student, my career is in the sciences, um, and, you know, research funding for the sciences, trusting science, and uh, seeing science make an impact on society by using the scientific advances that we make. I believe that science should be funded and science is truth. There's no real debate there. Government putting together the Brain Initiative, the Microbiome Initiative, and any initiative to come is going to bring scientists together throughout the entire country and it's going to foster innovation and the government being behind that is super important for us to stay on top as a country. for this many people marching in over 600 cities around the world and get on that science policy and funding. Facts and sort of, sort of scientific ideas have become political and controversial in a way that I find uncomfortable. And I clearly see the idea of science under attack by the current administration, so it's very disturbing. There are a lot of us <laughs> who believe in facts. Not alternative facts. <laughs> I did a whole bunch of different um, scientific accomplishments from immigrants, um, and I actually put a Jay Z quote. <laughs> it says, "Not bad, huh?" For some immigrants. My lab is very diverse, as many academic labs are, um, and so in my lab, I have people from the seven different countries represented. My parents uh, did everything for me. They immigrated to America. Uh, they both are scientists and engineers, um, and they are basically my heroes and why I want to pursue this uh, with my life. <laughs> Guess what it's doing right now? Raining. Precipitating. Oh my god. Oh I made my gosh. Before. How's the March for Science going so far, guys? It's good. We're making it through. Signs are melting. <laughs> it looks like it looks like Roz on Franklin is sort of <laughs> just slowly melting away. Slowly melting away. Um, it's really exciting to see that so many people are here supporting this cause, even though the weather is not what we were all hoping. Right, we've been out here for hours. The march for science is coming to an end. We made it to the Capitol building. How do you guys feel? Good. Awesome. Tired. Sure. Tired. <laughs> do you feel like this event is going to have a lasting impact on science? Is this a turning point in how scientists view you know, how they're supposed to interact with culture and politics? I think so. I think some people sometimes are a little turned off by combining politics and science, but it's the way that science works. I mean, a lot of the research we do is affected by policy. A lot of our funding is affected by policy. So I think that, if anything, it's pushed scientists to try to make a statement for uh, what they want out of um, their government. There are a lot of scientists that are more excited about writing blogs for the public and more excited about trying to get involved in policy discussions. So I do hope that if nothing else comes of this, that we do see uh, more engagement from scientists in the society role.